Okay guys, so hopefully it's gonna be quick or not, I don't know. First time me making the video, I'm gonna make lots of mistakes, so haters, please hate me, lovers love me, I don't care. So I got this um, uh, BPS knife, um, uh, Adventure, and it came with uh, uh, this holder as well, but since I like to work on leather, uh, it's, it's a little bit dry, and it's it's really really rough on the touch but uh not the point of this video for now but um let me just uh, show you what a great knife that is i got it for about maybe i think 50 dollars canadians canadian dollars and uh, it came i already unpacked it so there's no unboxing video came with this little nice knife sticker i think and also with the uh let the adventure begin barcode not sure where it's gonna take me probably probably on their website or something uh, i came with the uh, fire starter uh, i like i said i don't know the proper terms but uh, the wood is good um, uh, the cover of the uh, striker is still uh, filled with lacquer or some kind of black paint to protect it from corroding and uh, the knife itself uh, it also comes with the uh, uh, PBS knives uh, sort of napkin that you can actually need to clean it because it is uh, coated in the uh, gum oil to prevent the corrosion. And this is not a stainless steel knife, so uh, you need to take care of it. You need to oil it uh, once in a while. So I already uh, cleaned it up. I was hoping that I'm gonna get some oil from this sort of like holder in here, but it looks like the whole oil went out. And this is a this is a really really beautiful knife. It sits with my hand. Um, lots of people complain about this particular part that it sort of like digs in into their finger and it's kind of sharp. It is kind of sharp, but I don't see any problem with that. Maybe they have a bigger hands than me. It is beautiful. You can see laser etched, sort of a, like a trademark logo. Uh, the corners are really sharp, so they're actually really good for, you know, striking the, uh, the match. And uh, you can actually see that uh, there's a little bit of a paint coming off already, but I haven't started it playing with it yet. I'm just giving you the idea. Beautiful knife, really sort of like well balanced. Uh, I think I need to uh, grind a little bit of uh, corners in here on the uh, uh, the whole whole thing because it's it's a little bit protruding through the handle, but I have no problem with that. That's that's perfectly fine with me. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try to make it work for my camping trip. And this knife is amazing. And uh, probably the best way, if you're going to use it for cooking or handling the food, is uh, probably use the uh, either acetone or alcohol. Uh, unscrew these guys right here uh, so you can actually access the whole shank as well. And uh, uh, get rid of the uh, gun oil and use mineral oil and then then you're good to go you're not going to be uh, suffering from the uh, gun oil poisoning effects or whatever they're called like i said i have no idea what i'm doing this is my first youtube video so bear with me so the main point i got the knife and i got the holder for it it's really it's really good leather it's been it's been blackened on the uh, inside as well and uh, if you see this little uh, sleeve right here that's where your fire starter actually goes in uh, it's so tight I cannot get it in all the way I've also seen some people that once you uh, plug it in there's a small groove on the leather that uh, lets you sort of like not to lose it I don't see a big difference on my end here but uh, we're all uh, I'll probably do. I'll just uh, uh, get some uh, get some string, attach it to the handle, and just put it on top of here so it doesn't get loose. But it's pretty tight, so I don't know if you're running from a bear, <laughs> then you might lose it. But uh, it's pretty tight. Anyway, so let's 
get all of the things away. So um, this strap is really nice. You can use your belt um, and basically just, uh, you know, hook it through that. Or if you want it to uh, wiggle a little bit, you know, it, some people prefer to use the belt through here and then it sort of like wiggles and then, you know, it uh, gives you more sort of a, like a control instead of the, uh, the actual sort of like pull of mount action in here. But the leather is beautiful. I'll put it this way. Uh, smells nice. I love the stitching as well. They're pretty well done. Uh, the rivets in here are also pretty good. So, um, yeah, it's it's amazing for for a budget knife or a budget first timer bushcraft knife. This is amazing. But yeah, so this color is not really my color as well. And like I said, I I like to work with leather leather sometimes and. Uh, want to sort of like uh, make it a little bit personal as well so what i'm going to do i'm going to actually how you say it not dye it but clean it um, uh, condition it and make it uh, make it more sort of a softer because right now it's really like it's really tough it's really it's really tough so i have a couple of uh, uh, things that i can show you that i do uh, when i either restore shoes or restore some of the uh, old jackets that everyone sort of like thinks that oh leather is gone no the leather always lasts all you have to do is just take care of it a little bit so what i have here i have a um, basically any cloth that you can have and uh, what i do i just put it uh, i make it a little bit wet not dripping wet but uh, wet so it's so if I just squeeze it a little bit, you see there's a little bit moisture is coming in, out, I mean, from it. So what I do, I just place it over my leather garment and I use steam. You can use, basically, you can use um, uh, I have this iron right here, put it on the high settings, give it a lot of steam. And then you just iron everything out. And uh, believe me, you can actually make your good quality leather shoes wrinkle-free with this method. But uh, in this case, I'm actually going to try out my steamer that I got recently. It is, uh, let me just show you, it's called uh, Reliable. And the model is DASH. 100 gh it's pretty good it's pretty compact uh, you can see you can actually kind of iron it with all of this uh, sort of like ironing board kind of feature uh, it really really works great on even uh, on my wife's uh, silk clothing you know that you cannot really sort of like iron it so let's give it a go so i'm going to start it up you will see the steam is coming out and then gently through the cloth I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure and another thing is if you're working on the shoes uh, this will also get rid of all of the uh, factory wax that they applied uh, to the actual shoe to make it nice and look looking shiny waterproof but sometimes they don't use the quality product so that's what i prefer to do when i restore my shoes and this thing is really hot so now you can take a look you see the color has changed completely this is a good sign and you also see that there's no uh, black residue this part it was it was here before from my previous uh, towel so now what we're going to do we're going to turn it the other way around and like i said okay let's just test it out you see there's nothing there's no dirt on the cloth so let's see if we're gonna get some of the dirt from this so once again this is really wet and you can do it with iron but since i have the steamer that's what i need i need the steam to get all of the oils, all of the uh, 
production grease or dirt actually go inside of the towel. So the towel acts as a uh, sponge, basically. Don't do that on the actual leather itself. You always need to have some kind of a, like a barrier that is really wet and nice. Oh, this little guy produces so much steam, it's impossible. It's better than my ironing method. Alright. Let's take a look. Perfect. There's no grease, there's no dirt. So the leather is pretty much clean. So let me just do a couple of corners here, just to make sure that it gets all wet and saturated all this beautiful steam and this will also make you can actually uh, sort of like use your ow that's hot and actually if uh, if your holster becomes a little bit loose over time of your use just use this method it actually shrinks the leather a little bit and uh, once you do that just put your knife right into it and leave it leave it to dry preferably over 24 hours so it can actually mold melt mold i don't know to the uh, uh to the shape of the knife okay so this part is done really be careful because it's really it's really hot so now and you can actually you can actually smell the leather as well so I'm going to take that out of the way so look now it looks a little bit dark because a lot of moisture uh, got absorbed by the uh, leather and soon you'll see you see this part it's already starting to dry so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave this uh, to dry for about maybe 15 30 minutes sometimes people let it dry for about a couple of hours uh, it depends I'll, I'm going to just leave it as is and I'm going to uh, check out on it when it's all dried up and for now this is pretty much you see right here it not sure if the camera picks up but you can actually see that it's already drying i would not recommend to use the heat gun or uh, your wife's you know a hair blower on the leather because the heat can damage the leather let the leather do its own thing once it's wet it's going to be wet once it's dry it's going to dry out on itself but you can actually see in this in this portion right here that it's already drying so it absorbed all of this moisture so the next step what we're going to do it's not necessary but i like to do it uh, we're going to use um, a subtle soap uh, that will give the uh, leather moisture and uh, it will actually clean it even further so that's the product that i use really nice really cheap on amazon i think it's like 12 canadian dollars or something but um, uh, this is the uh, yellow type uh, you can also get basically a clear coat if you're afraid to uh, actually uh, you see this uh, white uh, stitching right here this can yellow it this will not yellow it but we don't really care because i'm gonna do something different with it so for now let it dry out and i'll see you in a second okay welcome back it was a second for you it was about i let it dry for about an hour or so so now we can see the color is back and uh, almost to its original color so now what we're going to do we're going to clean it this step is not necessary but I like to do it anyway, so I'm using the uh, subtle soap uh, that removes all of the things and grease and grime and all the nasties. I'm not quite sure whether should I use a clear one or the yellow one, but since I'm going to change the color of the um, of the actual uh, skin itself, I don't really care, so I'm going to use 
the uh, yellow one. It might stain some of the parts of the stitching if you are not a fan of that. Be careful. Uh, but since I'm also going to dye it uh, with uh, a little bit of a red color, uh, this whole thing is going to be a completely different color for my own liking. So let me just put that in the way. I'll show you how I do it. So basically, you pop it open. And in here, this uh, lid uh, acts as a container for the water. And I'm just using the little bit of water so it's all sort of nice wet and wet in there. I'm just using the plain uh, water. I'm not using a tap water because it contains minerals and all the calcium and all that stuff. Yeah, I know. If you're not anal as me, you can use normal water. That it shouldn't be the problem but i i just do this like that so basically what do you do i have this um, uh, special brush you don't have to have one you can use a cloak like for example like one of the rags as well you can just uh, put it in here as long as you get it soapy but since i have it why not use it so i'll just tap it in here and just gently leather it out and as you can see it's a little bit has a a little bit of a gap so you can see that that contains pretty much quite a big amount of uh, soap on it so i'm just gonna dig it once again move it out of the way then just put the leather leather i mean and you just start brushing it and Leather soap is it's really good for any sort of leather and you see how let me just squeeze it out you see how it changes the color right away because the leather soap actually gets absorbed by by leather itself which gives it a nice and good moisturizing effect Think of it as uh, if you're going to uh, one of those, I don't know, it's like most, mostly girls go to those places like the, the, the spas and all that stuff. So it, this is basically just the scrubbing and exfoliating the skin of the leather so it can absorb all of the, uh, the nutrients. And then, yet again, you're also getting rid of some of the uh, some of the uh, dead skin cells, your dead particles that grow on your face. And uh, as you can imagine, you see how it's a little bit leathery, but you see, like this part is already absorbed. So the leather is taking it like there's no like there's no tomorrow it actually likes it and if i add just a little bit of water just to make it a little bit for me and look at that i'm going to turn it the other way around do the same thing and brush helps it to get rid of all of the uh, debris that has been stuck in the manufacturing process or so. Or so. so now we're going to go to the uh, slinging part. It looks like soap, but it's not. It's not really sort of soapy. It's more of a has a more of a like a waxy texture to it. That's the beauty of the uh, uh, saddle soap instead of the, the actual soap because the, the actual soap got rid of pretty much everything. But this is actually uh, conditions the leather. So it's more like a, like a, like a conditioner instead of the, the actual shampoo, if you know what I mean. Get this all wet. And this all cleaned up and you see now 
it's all pretty much it's wet but it, it looks good and the leather loves it like if if it was some kind of a there was a, some kind of a like a protection uh, from the uh, elements treatment it would not absorb it but this leather or any type of real leather it actually absorbs it and it stores it like i was saying it's like a, it's like a cream for your face because your your skin is filled with pores same thing with this piece of leather or any type of real leather it has pores and all of the moisture it goes in and it stays there and if you add a little bit of oil or wax it protects it so now i'm just doing the uh, finishes finishing finishing touches and once again we're going to let this leather sit absorb all of its nutrients that they just gave it and we'll continue to the next process another thing to recommend is not to get it too too much wet or too much uh, sort of like don't put too much um, uh, the saddle soap in there because it might get a little bit a little bit oversaturated we just need it nice ginger amount and i've just uh, used this brush and i've used it in here i think i just brushed maybe like five six times or so that saves me amount on on the leather soap and also gives me the nice cover and nice sort of a moisturizing ability to get this leather all nice and flammable I don't know as you can see my English is not that great but it's okay as long as you get the idea you get the ingredients you get the technique and you see Another thing is, uh, it's it's a good thing to have a leather soap if you have a couple of scratches in here and there. It can actually uh, sort of like repair it a little bit. Now that I can notice that there is a little bit of a... Uh, let me see if you can actually pick it up. Yeah, camera is blocking it. There is a little bit of a scratch here. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. All you have to do is just moisturize it a little bit of a gap here but hey it's a it's a bush knife bush bushcraft knife right so it's gonna get scratches anyway and if you can see the actual oops the actual uh, stitching in here i'm not sure if you can actually see it on camera but it darkened a little bit and it got a little bit of a yellow uh, tint to it since I've used the yellow saddle soap so now we're going to leave it for I don't know for another 30 minutes to an hour some people use it after 10 minutes doesn't matter it's I can actually see already that it's it's already being uh, being dried out and after that step yep you see this this part is already you can see the difference between this dark part and this one because uh, it's a it's kind of a thicker i mean thinner layer but in here it's a little bit thicker so all of this stuff you see right here sort of like drooping in in there uh i wanted to to absorb and right away you can actually see that you can actually squeeze it so after it's done i'm going 
to well, actually I'm going to put my knife to it right away so it can actually dry a little bit and get molded to the knife's areas since it's now pliable pliable playable that can give you a nicer sort of a fit of a knife and uh, you can you can actually shape it a little bit as well with your fingers I've seen another person that uh, he puts uh, another rivet in here because over time his leather sort of like became too stretched but that's all you have to do all you have to do is just uh, you know just use a little bit of a saddle soap so your leather can be back to its shape and with all of my sort of like molding I made some scratches so I'm going to you know just give it a little bit of a friction to let it dry out a little bit faster yeah and this part is almost like dried out you know what I think I'm gonna since it took the leather so much I'm going to give it another another coat that's because that needs to be flexible most of the times and since it took a lot of moisture that means that part was super dry And then again, you know, why waste the product? That's the beauty part of the uh, ladder soap. Initially it was designed to actually clean the, uh, the seeds that you wear on your horse, which is ladder, ladder, ladder. I don't know how to pr pronounce it properly, but uh, it really conditions it and makes it uh, makes it much more uh, comfortable for the horse and for the rider as well, because uh, it it's malleable. You can actually shape leather to your liking. If it's dry, if it's been through winds rain, snow, it loses its ability to bend. Similar, similar to the thing when you're when you're going out of the shower and you use all sorts of you know shampoos or any other products, you come out and uh, you feel that your skin is a little bit dry. So that's why you apply the moisturizer to your skin. Similar thing to that. This is this is animal skin, so it's Skin is skin, right? It needs moisture because it has pores. And there we go. You see how it all went. Oops, let me just move that. And it also protects the leather. So you can actually have this thing. It's gonna last you like 200 years if you at least a month, you know, condition it and give it a little bit of a TLC, so to speak. Good. Now we have good fit. I can take it out, take it back in. It's not going anywhere, but I'm going to make it a little bit more comfy for the knife to sit in. And since uh, this is a carbon steel knife, like I said previously, you also need to oil it as well. I don't actually have any oil. I'm going to um, basically de-oil it and I'm going to um, use the mineral oil instead of the gun oil. Uh, so it's not as toxic. So you can actually cut food or cut game with it and not and not to be worried about getting some kind of a 
poisoning or reaction or whatever that gun well does to your internal organs. All right, so that looks good to me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it as is, like that. Oh, it's actually good. So all of the air goes around all of the edges and it will absorb all of the... What's the name of it? Saddle soap. Once we're done that, I'm going to uh, actually condition it and uh, we'll take it from there. So we'll see you in a bit and uh, you'll see me in a second. So now it's all dried up. You can actually see how the leather set in a little bit. You can see this ball trick here. That's where the handle of the knife is. And it goes out beautifully. It comes in nicely and tight. Cannot get it out. So now let's take the knife out. And now what I'm going to do, like I've mentioned before, that I want to change the color a little bit. So I'm going to be using the uh, uh, this product that I got uh, to color some of my red shoes. And uh, it is uh, Scarlet, Scarlet Red. You can get it off Amazon for about, I think about like 10 bucks, but it does really good job of actually coloring things. I didn't expect it to be that good. So that's how it looks like. And I haven't actually touched this part yet. So I've only used uh, this portion over here just to cover my red blemished shoes. So now let me get just a normal cloth. I'm using just reusable cloth. Like you can see that it's been used, this is grease, and you can actually see a little bit of a red in here that I've used before. So now let's see how it's going to turn out. And like I said, this is a leather coloring, sort of a protective paint I don't know how it's called but let's see so all I have to do is just gently rub it in and and gently rub it in here and you can actually see how the white lines the white stitching used to be white now it became red if I can get it right there we go. So now I'm just going to uh, gently rub it into the skin. And yeah, you can you can definitely see how the white capron stitching actually takes it right away. Leather is not taking it that much, but we'll see. We'll see how it's going to turn out.
So I'm not sure if the camera can pick up the difference between this side and this side. It doesn't really give me a lot of reds in there, but in real life, yeah, I can see a little bit of a darkening on this part, but uh, not so much in here. But stitching, they're prominent. So let me actually get some more, get some more paint for the stitches. And this paint is also giving the leather a little bit of a moisturizing effect. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it gives it a nice shine as well. So instead of dull, hard leather, you can have shaped leather for your shank and uh, shank or handle. Like I said, my English is not that good. For the handle and for the blade itself to actually sit perfectly inside. And then again, you see, all white, look. All red. So I'm going to continue this process for a little bit. I'll probably speed up the the video so you don't have to sit here and listen to me.
Okay, all done. So now I'm going to give it maybe 30 seconds or so while I'm packing up my rugs. Give it a little bit of a gentle rub just to make sure that I don't have any of that cream. It's actually it's pretty thick, so I don't have it on the leather. And I was thinking to condition it, but uh, this this particular brand uh, it actually conditions it, so um, it's actually a cream and a conditioner, as I believe. Uh, let me just double check. Apply cream on clean shoes. Uh, yeah, but um, I got a lot of uh, conditioning from the actual uh, saddle soap, and I can I, I can actually see and I feel the leather. But you know, just to be on the safe side, let's just condition it, just to be sure. Let's just get my trusty gloves because I don't want to get my conditioner on my skin and I'm using just normal leather conditioner it has like coconut oil, olive oil all sorts of things uh, beeswax, coconut oil uh, Carnuba and um, Alde, uh, which is the plant I'm not familiar with. Oh, shake it up. Open it up. And pour it on our hand. And what I like to do, I don't like just like slobber it all over the place. What I do, I just tap it. And then using gentle motions, just cover the whole leather around. Yeah, it actually needs a lot of conditioner because. Oh wow, it soaks it up like water. So that's good. It protects the leather. It makes it more malleable. It's not as stiff as it used to be. I think it needs a little bit more. And it prolongs the life. Same thing, you can do the same thing with your shoes. Like I, I do this with my uh, cowboy boots and they become almost like brand new, even though they've been in use for several years. Like I said, leather is just, it's like your skin. And you also need to take, it, take care of your skin as well. I'm not a big fan of Fancy schmancy women's protein based glucose formulas that that are like three hundred dollars. All you have to do is just a little bit of moisturizer. And actually, like to be on the funny note, I got this. This is just basically oops, upside down. It's vitamin E. And I use it as a moisturizer for my <laughs> leather products. It's cheap, it's available. And if it's good for your skin, obviously it's going to be good for the old dried out cowhide or pig skin or lamb skin. 
and I've tested it out and uh, it turned out pretty nice. So, yep, I think I like the new look better uh, with stitches not as bright white as they are. Uh, the holder is a little bit darker than it used to be. But like I said, you, you, can, you can color your leather any... Well, you can make it white, but you can... Uh, you can still work with it and you can play around as long as you have a little bit of a like if you want to test it out you know just find a like a small batch where nobody would see and just test it out with either this or you can make it brown and that's a shoe cream you know it's it's not a rocket science or you can also use any other dyes that you're comfortable with but I prefer to use uh, those creams because they actually they just don't dye it. They give the leather moisture that it needs. And same thing as with the knife itself. It also needs the preferably if you're not going to be using it for food, you can use gun oil or similar products to it. But I'm trying, well, I'm planning to use it as the uh, cutting knife as well, since uh, in the camping situation, this thing can do a lot of things. So I'm going to strip all of the oils that are actually on it, on a, from the manufacturing process. And uh, uh, the company said that they used gun oil. So I'm going to uh, unscrew these two bolts Then I'm going to take the whole thing out. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, acetone and then I'm going to be using just the uh, alcohol to clean it uh, nicely. And then uh, I just basically apply any uh, mineral oil. Well, not any, but it's, it's called mineral oil. And uh, afterwards, uh, you're going to get rid of all of the uh, toxins that's uh, sort of like protecting this knife for you to be being shipped. And yet again, since it's not a steel, I mean, uh, it's not a stainless steel knife, you also need to make sure that uh, once you're done with it, just, you know, just wipe it clean. Don't let any water on it, otherwise it's going to get corroded. And one other thing is that it's kind of a pain but uh, most uh, most of the time you can have a small hole in here just to uh, drain all of the um, stuff from the knife once you put it in there so it sort of like drains but then again this is not your typical knife um, this is not the stainless stainless steel knife so you need to keep it in a good condition if you're lazy if you're just going hiking or camping or doing it once in a while uh, you forgot to clean it afterwards or you drop it in the water you need to you need to protect it you need to protect it because otherwise it's going to get all rusted up but even though you can you can do that it's still it's still a pretty good knife for the value anyway so i think we are done and I like how it turned out. It became way darker than it was originally. And it's all now it's 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 so soft now. It's not it's not as hard as it was. So you got all of the things. You uh, conditioned the leather. I've painted it. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert this fire starting here. And there we go. Now it goes in because it used to... You see you see the difference how the, the skin sort of like stretches? Before it was almost impossible for me to actually put it in. And now, let's say, get it in. Yeah, it's still a little bit stiff. 
but that's a good thing that means you're not gonna be losing it anytime soon so once it is in the leather will relax itself oops got some more juice from it from that hole so once it relaxes itself it's going to shape itself to the actual uh, diameter of the fire starter and i'm going to put the knife back in and then just gently you know use the pressure to actually mold it to the knife's dimensions so this way it will have a better fit and then you don't have to worry about plug it in and, and losing it sounds so before we're pretty much done let me just get my gloves off but before we are completely done I'm, uh, I'm going to make the leather shine a little bit so I'm going to uh, use uh, basically any horse brush that you have this is the brand and I, I like it because it's a it's a bigger brush I have I have a little bit of a smaller kiwi brush that you can get it just make sure that it's made out of the uh, the horse hair because horse hair are coarse and they make the wax make it even better if I want to go to uh, additional level I can actually use uh, Kiwi wax so I can actually cover it so it gets protected uh, from uh, any moisture but it's kind of late today and uh, I'm not willing to do that I'm not going out in the rain with the leather but uh, I would advise you to do that if you are outdoorsy and there's always a rain of some sort this will give it a, sort of like a water repellent abilities I also have uh, this thing that it's it's pretty nice smells awful but you can actually spray it but I'm not gonna sometimes it can ruin the leather so I don't want to introduce any other chemicals except for the box itself you can actually get a candle uh, like normal candle that you get in the grocery store and then just basically uh, melt it and just cover it cover the whole thing and then after it's covered you know just use a cloth to get rid of all of the uh, paraffin and that's going to protect your leather as well so but in this case I think I had enough stress for this leather for now. So I'm just going to buff everything up back down to it. And you can definitely see, I hope, that it gets this nice shine. So there's buffed. Well, yeah, because there's lots of lots of oils in there. But yeah, that is how I took care of my... I'm not quite sure exactly what's the technical term for that thing. It's called Nozhny in Russian, but 
it goes out nicely still retains its shape instead of just like being all over the place and this sleeve as I call it for now would be protected for a long time thank you for watching and um, see you next time thanks guys